it's more like a, a journey in the sense of I'm going to explain all the things that fails for us because we fail on many things. But um, at the end, fortunately, we, I think we, we found the right way to do that. So first, my company. My company is Soprasteria. It's like uh, Accenture, if you know Accenture, Capgemini, or Atos. We are doing about the same job. We're working for energy. We're working for government. We're working for, uh, for direct end customer. And uh, we were not using that much Kubernetes. It's just something like about two years that Kubernetes come into the scene. And we found out that actually Kubernetes is not only for startup company. Even big company like ours could really um, enjoy a Kubernetes structure. Because uh, we have sometimes a very big, big uh, park of application. And it's really hard to resuscitate them when we need to make some, some debugging. And Kubernetes is really good at that. If you need to resuscitate your application just to make your, your test and analyze, it's really easy to do that with Kubernetes. The second thing is the size matter. Yes, the size matter. I mean that uh, when you have a big cluster, you make some very huge economy. And I'm speaking about money here. Building, building very, very little cluster is, is expensive, actually. So it's one thing we work on is doing very big cluster. It's very important for us to, to make big cluster. And uh, of course, Kubernetes is bringing the usual advantage of Kubernetes, which is DevOps, because everything is as code. And beside, uh, there was the opportunity to provide a unified way to build CI, CD in the company, because with something like uh, 30,000 collaborators, something like 20,000 developers, was hard to have a unified way of doing CI, CD. Because Kubernetes was new, we could uh, use uh, this opportunity to, to make something more uniform. So now, uh, our customer quickly asks us the question, so OK, Kubernetes is nice, but how do you, do, do you manage the backup? Because I'm not going to speak about that, but of course, we do stateful application. We are not stateless. And we could discuss that um, in a more longer way, but obviously, we have built every database, every system in, in pods, in Kubernetes. So we are using stateful application. And the question is, how do you make backup? So to answer this question, you have to, uh, you have to, to think about the requirement. First, first question is, what do you want to backup? The first thing you can do, the first thing you can do is the old way. You back up the bottom of the pyramid. I mean, all the file system, all the VMs, you back up everything. That's the old way. The second, the second level of the pyramid is the ETCD database, which is the definition of all the Kubernetes resource plus the definition of the cluster. Then comes the namespaced resource, resources, and then the business data. So what do we want to back up? Do we want to back up the bottom of the pyramid or the top of the pyramid? And of course, the answer is backing up the, 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 the bottom of the pyramid is not a good choice. It's too expensive, too difficult to reconstruct. I'm going to, to be more ex explicit on this. But what we want to back up is the top of the pyramid, the business data and the namespace resources. Beside that, we have some other requirements. First, we want to choose where we make the backup. Uh, Sometimes you want to use the EBS snapshot, which could be a good fit. But sometime you want to save on S3. On some on-premise solution, you just want to backup on NFS. And so you have many, many places where you could make your backup. And whatever the solution you decide to build, you have to build a solution where you have the choice. And the second thing is, where do you uh, rebuild your application? Where do you restore it? 
And sometimes the answer could be not necessary in the same cluster. It could be another cluster. And uh, the last thing, which is very important, if, if you want to have the backup process successful, it must be easy. It must be easy to use it. It must be easy to operate it. It must not be too complicated. And we have a, a bunch of operators, people, and they don't want to make YAML most of the time. A little bit of YAML, but very little bit. Most of the time, they are more used some, to some tools like Veeam. If people know Veeam, it's a backup tool. And they want to work with a, with a graphical user interface. They don't want to make Kubectel apply uh, and, and so on. So that was all our requirement. And with all that, it was difficult to find a good solution that, that, that fits all these requirements. So <clears throat> there is another point I was saying, which is today becoming the number one point, is the mobility. Why do we need mobility? First, for an obvious reason, the disaster recovery. The disaster recovery is directly linked to the mobility, the ability to move to another cluster to another cloud provider. But we have also another requirement, which is the sovereignty. What does that mean? It means that we must have the control of where we decide to put our data. And because I know I'm, I am in USA, and I don't want to, to, be, uh, to be negative around this great country, but in USA, we have something called the Cloud hacked, which means that even if you are in a data center operated by AWS in Paris, if the American government has an inquiry to, to get data, they can get the data. So it's very hard to explain to our customer, which are French government customer, okay, we are going to put your data in AWS, and until things are not getting wrong with USA, don't be, don't be worried, there won't be any problem. But if something is going wrong, we, we don't have the, the guarantee that something is not going to be disclosed by the need of an investigation, for instance. So it's very important for the provincy to be able to move whenever we want, whenever we feel that we should move. And of course, the last reason is the cost. Because there are many, many cloud providers now, and not only AWS, Google, and Azure. You want to be able to move, to, be, to, be, to choose the, the cloud provider, which, which is going to, to bring you the best price. So mobility is also very important for that. So mobility is a topic, is a real topic that we must have in our mind when we choose the solution. So, so to the last point, the sovereignty, there is two points to manage that. The first one is to build your own data center. And we did that. We, we were working with a metal provider. We installed OpenStack on this. And once OpenStack was installed, then we, we start to install OpenShift on it and over Kubernetes cluster. And uh, we had a complete control of where the data was, and there was no risk around the Cloud Act among the others. And uh, that was working. But the thing is, this solution of building your own data center, your own Kubernetes service, is extremely expensive. It's extremely expensive and very hard to maintain. You have to, to get the right team for that, to have a very good team, and to be able to to find enough customer to feed your infrastructure. Because once you build it, you have to, to get money back from the people who use that. So it's, it's a hard fight. Another one, another solution, is to, to use the regular cloud provider on the market and to be able to move whenever you want. That's the other way you build the sovereignty. So just to come back to our first history of how did we build uh, this tool system. The first thing we, we, we did 
was the more natural, the more uh, the, the one that people were used to was to, to build to, to build a, a backup solution based on the old way, which means backing up the, the bottom of the pyramid. But it was extremely expensive because we had to save all the VM. It was very hard to reconstruct because the number of nodes change constantly. The volumes are changing constantly. And the last point, which was really a blocking point, we are in a multi-tenant cluster. So if we decide to restore the, the Kubernetes cluster in one point in the time, we are putting everybody in the past. And that's a problem. Sometimes you just want to use point in time for one customer, not for all the customers. So this solution was not working very well. Then we moved to another solution because we were mainly using AWS. We, we start to use Lambda. So what did the Lambda do? Simple as that, it was working on all the EBS volume and make a snapshot of, of all of them. But this solution has also its limit. First, it only works on AWS, which is something that we're not very smart when you say it's very important to be mobile. Uh, so the second thing is we couldn't apply different policies. Some of the customer wanted to have a backup every week. Some of the customer want, wanted to have a backup every hour. So how do you make the difference with that? It's nearly impossible. Not so easy to reconstruct. I don't know if you have already, guys, experienced these things of uh, building a new PVC, I mean a new PV from an EBS snapshot. It's not so easy. You can't give that to a simple operator. It's, uh, it's quite hard, actually. Then we try something else, probably the worst solution we imagine. OK, you can laugh. I understand. We were doing a, a corn server with port forwarding, and we, and we made all the, the backup stuff on, on it using the, the primitive like PG dump, Mongo dump, and all that stuff. But the thing is, first, your corn server becomes POF a single point of failure, which is a very big problem, and it often fails. The port forward is not stable at all. We experienced that. So sometimes the, the backup didn't work. And you have to share all the credentials. Because if you decide to, to back up a, a Postgre post application, on the cron server, you have to, to bring back the credential of the Postgre. You don't have the choice. Otherwise, you can't make the backup. So this solution was not ideal. And finally, we tried that. The cron job. Everybody know what's a cron job on uh, Kubernetes. It's uh, just the fact that you can run a job. So with this solution, you solve two problems. First, you don't have a single point of failure because the, the cron job is managed by Kubernetes. And the second thing is you don't have to share the secret between the database and the current server because there is no more current server. So that's cool. But that's not completely cool because when you make the backup, you have to backup all the data in a S3, for instance. And then if you want each team to be able to manage that properly, you have to give the credential to all the teams. And so we, we found ourselves in a, in a situation where we were giving to something like uh, 100 teams, about 100 teams, the same credential to the same S3 for the backup. And uh, the other thing that I must say is that we have no monitoring. Sometimes things don't work and you, are, you have to build your own monitoring system. Most of the time you try to do that with Prometheus, but it's not easy. And uh, you don't have any retention policy. Sometimes you want to keep a backup for uh, once a month, once a year, uh, once a week. So when you, when you do that, uh, it's, it's hard to do that with a cron job. It's really hard. Not, not easy, at, at least. OK, so at the end, even if we try plenty of things, we didn't have a solution. We failed. And when I say we fell, we really fell on it because uh, we had some, some case of some of the project 
just found out that the, the, the data protection was not working, and because they didn't check that the cron job was in a, in a situation of failure, they didn't realize that they didn't have a backup of the, of the database. So we had to fix that very quickly to solve the problem, but we had no monitoring and no retention. So I can say that we kind of fell on this. So uh, after many studies, uh, we found that the, the Casten solution was the best one for this topic. For the mobility, for the retention policy, for the ability to, to give, the, pros, to give the, the tool to everybody easily. Because this is a very, a very hot topic. Make the backup, make the retention, make the migration something easy. Easy for the operator team. We have some, something like um, nearly 2,000 people just working on operation in our company. And the level are very, very different. So we, we need to provide a tool which is easy to, to manipulate. I must say that also we have a, like kind of a, of a certain turnover. And it's really hard to, to transfer the competencies for that. And uh, we have the security, which is uh, include. And the tools was first forked for Kubernetes. Kubernetes was the, main, was the main target from the beginning. So all in all, this tool was fitting all our requirements. We are not blocked in a, in a vendor lock-in, in a storage vendor lock-in. So for instance, we are able to save from EBS and then to restore in safe or in an over storage system. It's, it's possible. We are not uh, tied to a storage provider. The last thing, and I think it's the last thing I, I must say, is actually the storage provider are not changing that much. You have safe, you have uh, EBS, Google Azure, Storage OS, few, few people in the market. So it doesn't change that much. But what is changing a lot is the requirement about migration, savings, and, uh, and backup. And for example, uh, that's, that's a requirement that you quickly meet when you have a, a real customer, is how I can make a different retention policy depending on my application. Or how can I do uh, instead of, a, on, of an EBS snapshot, I prefer to make a MySQL dump. Is it easy to do with your tool? Uh, the last one, how can I move from a cluster to another one, which is a strong requirement, especially because we have customers who are on-premise. Uh, and the last one, being able to manage many vendors, and it's what we do. In our, in our cluster, we use safe EBS, and uh, we try some other uh, storage providers sometimes. But we, we, we really work with, this, with these two. And this one is, the, is a use case that we are facing. We are using a big cluster on OpenShift 3. And we are going to move to OpenShift 4. And there is no upgrade in place possible with OpenShift 4. So we have to migrate the application. Uh, one by one. So we need a tool efficient for that. That's another requirement. Uh, and another requirement is how, do we do, how can I integrate my, uh, my storage requirement into my CI CD? For instance, you start, uh, you start a test. You just want to make a backup of your database before running the test. So that at the next run, you can restore the database and run the test again. And all that is not so easy. And you want to integrate that in your CI CD. So this is an example of what we notice is the, the storage provider are extremely stable, but the requirement around the data are very changing, always in movement. So I have finished this part, and we're going to, 